So the hymn I will take for praise is Open the Eyes of Mouth. Jesus. To you be the glory, Lord. To you be the honor. To you be the praise. To you be the thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Jesus. Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The next hymn will be from Holy Spirit. Follow me now. Let us close our eyes and be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as we sing this hymn, let us mean every word that we sing. Come in your heart. I love you. 
Consuela, make that opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the, the Son, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this very hour asking for your blessing and help us listen to your word attentively as we are gathered here today. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand. And we ask you, you will clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. And help us always ask the Holy Spirit to guide us whenever we don't know what we want to do. We ask this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Consuela, for leading us into that very spiritual worship and that opening prayer. And my sisters and brothers, a warm welcome to each one of you. Today, we are going to reflect on the day, not on the day's gospel, because we have already reflected on this gospel a couple of weeks ago. But today, we are going to have a special teaching, and it is entitled, Receiving the gift of tongues and of course we are going to have a healing service after that because when the spirit of God comes when the spirit of God is present there is always going to be miracles there are going to be signs and wonders and every manifestation of the Holy Spirit so my precious brothers and sisters before we begin today's topic which is receiving the gift of tongues you might have all noticed in the last three four days we have been talking about the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have been talking about the awesome ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have been talking about the super ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then yesterday, we also saw that when we have a question, when we have some doubt, we can always pose that question to the Holy Spirit who is already inside of us. And when we ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always answer our questions. The Holy Spirit who is our teacher, the Holy Spirit who is our guide, will always give us the answers because he is a teacher. And therefore we don't need to go to anybody because when the Holy Spirit answers us, he will always lead us to Jesus. He will always lead us to the word of God. He will always answer according to the word of God. So this is one thing that we can always understand and we can be sure about that the answer that we have received is from the Holy Spirit only because when the Lord speaks to us, he will always speak to us according to his word. You know, my sisters and brothers, the, Jesus in John chapter 6 verse 63, what did he say? 
He said, my word is spirit, my word is life. He said, my word is spirit, my word is life. So if the word is spirit, the word is the Holy Spirit, it is also life-giving. And so if it is life-giving, it is spirit-filled. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he will always, you know, harmonize with the word of God. He will harmonize with what Jesus has already taught us because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all together in unity. It is the Holy Trinity. So when Jesus came on this earth, he always said, I do nothing other than what the Father wants me to speak. And now that the Holy Spirit is here, the Holy Spirit will always speak what Jesus has already told us because the Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are all in unity. So with this background, my sisters and brothers, today, Knowing that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, knowing that the Holy Spirit is our guide, knowing that the Holy Spirit is always encouraging us and leading us to Jesus. Today, we are going to study about how to receive the gift of tongues. And the gift of tongues is actually a gift that is already with us. We only need to activate it because the day we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the day we receive Christ, we also received with that baptism, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the gift of the Holy Spirit allows us to activate tongues, which is already within us. The gift of tongues is already within us. It is a matter of, you know, activating that gift by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit who is already within us. So to understand this, today let us go and study how the disciples even those who were pagans, who were those even who were who were not even circumcised, those even who had not even been in the in the in the in the in the covenant in the Old Testament, they were not even Jews, they were not even people who belonged to the kingdom according to the old covenant. But when they heard the word of God, when they heard the gospel being preached, this Holy Spirit or this uh, you know, Spirit of God, which was which is available to everyone who believes the gospel of Jesus Christ can now receive the Holy Spirit. You know, my brothers, this is the, the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant is this. In the Old Covenant, people were, were the chosen people because they were circumcised. They came from the tribe of Abraham. And therefore, because they belonged to the, to the descendants of Abraham, they had to be circumcised, which was an act of, of a covenant with God. And therefore, now, those people who belong to the covenant with, with, with Abraham, they were the ones who actually thought that they were the chosen people. But now that Jesus has already come, we don't belong to that covenant which, was, which is done by circumcision. We now belong to the covenant that Jesus made with his own precious blood when he died for the whole world. And therefore, when we believe the good news of Jesus, along with that believing, we also receive the Holy Spirit. So with this uh, understanding, how blessed we are right now in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, let us go to Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 48 is what the whole chapter is about. But we're not going to take the whole chapter, but we are going to read verse by verse. So let us read Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 1 to 2. 1 and 2. Let us read 1 and 2. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. Now, this verse in Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, it's talking about a man named Cornelius, he was a centurion of the Italian cohort. Now you must understand the background of, of Cornelius. Cornelius was not a Jew. He did not belong to the covenant of Abraham. He was not circumcised. He was not belonging to the original tribe of, of Israel. So he belonged to an Italian regiment. He was actually a Gentile. But you know, my brothers and sisters, this man was a God fearing man. Even though he was a Gentile, he was a God-fearing man. He did the right thing and he even had 
a wonderful prayer life. That's what it says. He was a devout man. Verse number two. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and he prayed constantly. You know, my brothers and sisters, although this man did the right thing, he had a wonderful prayer life. He was a God fearing man, but he did not have a personal relationship with God. He did not have a personal relationship with God. He was a God fearing man. He gave alms. He also, you know, prayed all the time, but he did not have a personal relationship with God. Isn't this amazing? You know, my brother says, just think about it. Here is a man who is praying all the time. He's giving alms. He's, he's well respectable. He even is, you know, a person who's praying continuously. He's doing all the right things, but he has no personal relationship with God. And this is something that can really, I can relate to because I'm exactly, I mean, I was exactly where this man Cornelius was. You know, my brothers and sisters, please listen to what I'm saying. You know why I can relate to all these things about about Cornelius is because I myself, although I was in the church, although I was serving in the church, I had every, you know, every place of, of position in the church as a lector, as a Eucharistic minister, as a parish pastoral council, as liturgy, as everyone in the church. I did all those things, but I did not have a personal relationship with God. You know, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, talking about myself, I'm, sh I'm only sharing my own testimony. You know, I had no knowledge of the word of God. Apart from, you know, when I went for the mass, I would listen to the first reading. If it was a Sunday, I would have the, it, there would be the psalm, there would be the second reading, there would also be the gospel reading. And you know, later on, I even went to service for mass every day. So there used to be the first reading, there used to be the psalm, and then there used to be the gospel reading. But you know, my brothers and sisters, I just did not know the word of God. I had no understanding. And although I focused on, you know, as, as a lector, I was a lector. I used to proclaim the word of God in the church. I was more focused on, you know, reading and proclaiming the word slowly, you know, with the right pronunciations. Even I, you know, I was, I was also the lector's head of, the, of that ministry. I always, you know, intended to have people always reading it very clearly with good diction and also, you know, uh, reading it with, so that there was clarity in the speaking. The words had to be pronounced properly and all those external things is what I would focus and even train people in the church to do. But you know, my brothers and sisters, the word had no impact in my life. The word did not have any impact in my life. All that I did was when the reading was done, first reading, I only wanted to know whether that person who's reading it is pronouncing the words correctly, whether the, the flow of the words is right. All my focus was whether that lector has dressed up appropriately, whether that person is really, you know, you know, looking very impressive to read the word of God. And you know, my brothers and sisters, my intention or my motive of going up there to proclaim the word of God was only to perform as a lector. And you know, even though I was a head of the lectors ministry for many years, even having almost about 100 lectors, those who used to proclaim the word of God, we, I used to personally get involved in training them to proclaim the word of God with clarity, with proper diction and with good pronunciation. You know, my brothers and sisters, there was no particular change in my own life neither was I able to give to others anything because all that I was focusing was is like, you know, a, a TV anchor. I don't know whether you have seen a TV anchor and out reading the news. You know, they need to be very clear with their with their reading. They need to be really good, you know, performers. They need to, you know, uh, present the whole thing in a very good way. And that was exactly my focus. Whenever the word was proclaimed, it was all about, you know, proper diction. It was all about, you know, giving a good performance so that everybody at the end of the service would say to us, especially the lectors. And if I wasn't doing the lectors whom I trained, you all did a very good reading. It was so wonderful. We were so impressed. They were not impressed with the word. Neither was I impressed with the word. It was more about the way it was delivered, the way it was, the performance was done. And you know, my brothers and sisters, having said that about me, this particular man, Cornelius, in today's reading in Acts chapter 10, 
was exactly a man like that. He did everything right. He prayed. He had a God. He was a God fearing man. He also gave alms. He, you know, went to a probably like today we would have gone to Asia Prema Nikitan. We would have gone home to the home for the aged. We would have gone to some orphanages. We would have probably given food on the streets. We would have probably done a lot of things like that. But it was all done because we had a feeling to do something. We had to feel, you know, we had to feel good that we did something so that we could at the end of the day say to the Lord, Lord, look at me. What a wonderful job I've done. And you owe it to me to bless me for what I'm doing. And you know, my sisters and brothers, I was exactly one of those. My understanding of all that was happening was precisely like this man Cornelius. He was not a bad man. He was not a wicked man. He was a man who did everything right, but he had no relationship with God. Now let us go and read from Acts chapter 10 verses 3 to 6. Acts chapter 10 verses 3 to 6. Let us read that. What happens now? One afternoon at about 3 o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? He answered, Your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. Now, now, brothers and sisters, now comes the real thing that what happened in this particular verse, especially in chapter 10. Cornelius is a man who's doing everything right. God fearing man. He prays. He gives alms. He's a very respectable man in society. But he doesn't know this God. He has no relationship with God. There is no communication from God to him only from his side to God. But look at this God. Look at this God. Because he knows that Cornelius is a, is a pagan. He's a Gentile. He cannot be, God cannot communicate to him because God can only communicate to us in spirit and in truth. And Cornelius is still not born again. Cornelius is a man who is still not known about Jesus Christ. He doesn't know that the Savior has come to this world, that he went to the cross, he died for our sins. He has opened up a new way for us to relate to God. So what happens? Cornelius has a visit from an angel. God sends an angel to Cornelius. And you know, my brothers and sisters, Cornelius, who has been doing all the right things, God sends an angel to him to ask him to send for one Simon Peter and with instructions what to do next. So it is Cornelius who has been communicating with God. He doesn't know this God. God cannot communicate to him in return. But look at the mercy of this God. He has seen the heart of this man. He has seen that he's a God fearing man. He has seen that his desire is for God because he's doing the right thing. He sends an angel for what reason? Because Simon Peter, who's an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, Simon Peter, who is now born again, Simon Peter, who has received the Holy Spirit. He received it at Pentecost. Simon Peter has been given a specific instruction for Cornelius. You know, my brothers and sisters, so what does these instruction and what was the purpose of this visitation of the angel? What do you think was the purpose of this visitation of the angel? The angel simply tells Cornelius, go and send for a man in Joppa by the name of Simon Peter. Let him come to you and then Simon Peter is going to give you certain instructions. You know, my brothers and sisters, I'm not going to go now to verses 7 onwards. I'm going to go skip straight away and go to Acts chapter 10 verse number 43. You know, in Acts chapter 10 verse 43, uh, before I go to 43, what happens is Simon Peter gets the information because uh, uh, Cornelius sends his men all the way to Joppa and he tells and his men tell Peter whom they find in Joppa that there is a man by the name of Cornelius who has summoned him, who wants to see him. And you know, 
at that particular time remember at the time when when god has spoken to cornelius the lord the holy spirit is also speaking to peter and he's telling peter i am going to show you a vision and what is this vision in this vision simon peter when he's going on the rooftop to pray he begins to see a vision where he sees all these animals he sees all these reptiles he sees all these unclean animals and he begins to in that vision he begins to hear a voice peter take those animals kill them and eat it now you know my brothers and sisters you must understand the jews will never eat anything that is unclean they will never eat pork they will not eat certain animals but here in this vision peter very clearly gets a message take whatever is in those in that in that vision of those animals that are there take them kill them and eat now peter is contemplating what that vision is all about and during this time when he is contemplating on this vision the men from jopa who are sent by cornelius who has had a, a visit from the angel they go to uh, peter and they say peter cornelius someone from the roman regiment wants to see you and you know the jews do not actually associate with gentiles the jews will never associate with people who are unbelievers but here after having that vision and now that jopa men have come to take peter peter begins to understand that there must be something to this vision he follows those men and he comes to all the way to cornelius and we pick up the reading in acts chapter 10 verse number 43 apart from many things that peter began to speak peter in verse number 43 is speaking something which i want to highlight to each one of us so let us go and read acts chapter 10 verse number 43 all the prophets testify about him that every one who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name now peter has already come all the way to to cornelius's house cornelius has invited his relatives his friends they are all gathered in the house in order to welcome peter because peter is going to speak to cornelius and his household and you know he begins by telling about jesus and then he says in verse number 43 he says all the prophets testify about him testify about whom about jesus that everyone who believes in him who believes in Jesus is going to receive forgiveness of their sins through the name of Jesus you know my brothers and sisters please understand this is the foundational or this is the starting point when a pagan or an unbeliever a person who has never heard about Christ is going to enter into the kingdom of God how not by baptism but by believing in what Jesus has done for you and me on the cross remember if there is anybody of any other faith who has never even heard of Christ the first thing that they need to know is there was a man by the name of Jesus he is god almighty the son of god who came down to the earth 100% is man he came down to the earth he went to the cross he died for you and me and for the sins of the whole world and anyone who believes in his sacrifice that he committed for us on the cross anyone who believes in the sacrifice of jesus that he died for us he rose again and now all our sins have been wiped out anyone who believes they are made the sons and daughters of the heavenly father and here in verse number 43 This is a wonderful statement that the Holy Spirit is making to Cornelius and his household about what Jesus has done for the whole world on the cross of Calvary. And no my brothers and sisters, this man Cornelius was a gentile. We must remember he was a gentile. He was not belonging to the covenant of Israel. He was not circumcised. Even though Cornelius was doing everything right, he did not have a personal relationship with the person of jesus christ and no i'm going to sort of paraphrase for you what acts chapter 10 verse 43 says because we see his uh, 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 peter is saying to him under the anointing of the holy spirit all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in his name receives forgiveness of sins through his name you know my brothers and sisters the the holy spirit is saying to uh, to to cornelius he's paraphrasing the word he's saying the holy spirit is speaking to him and he's saying look cornelius 
what you are going to what you are doing right now is fine with me you are doing great things for me you are doing wonderful to me wonderful things to me they are very pleasing in my eyes but i am going to do something much more with you i want to do something really spectacular with you i know you are a good man i know you are a god fearing man i know you are praying to me i know that you are giving arms i know you are doing everything right but that is not all that i want you to do i want to do you to do something much more i have sent this angel so that this angel will give you the news to go and meet peter this man who is anointed by the holy spirit is going to give you certain secrets of the kingdom he's going to introduce you to my son jesus and therefore i want you to listen to this man i want you to listen to the gospel i want to come and dwell on the inside of you I want to dwell inside of you. I want to possess you, uh, Cornelius. Although you are talking to me, you don't know who I am. But now that my son has come into this world, now that the Spirit of God is in this world, now that you are living in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I want you to know that you can also receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, my brothers and sisters, the in, the Lord tells him that I have sent an angel to ask you. to send a man named Simon Peter who's now going to tell you everything what are the instructions you're going to do and now my brothers and sisters when you begin to read all this you begin to think to yourself what an awesome god we have you know there are people in this world today who don't know about christ and we have so many of our sisters here in this classroom who were never born in a christian home but they were directed by the lord supernaturally because he chose them to some neighbor to some relative to some friend to some ministry so that they could grow in their relationship with the holy spirit and you know my brothers and sisters what happens in verse number 44 What happens in verse number forty-four? Peter is talking to all those people. Peter is telling all those people in Cornelius's household. Cornelius is a Gentile person. is listening about Jesus for the first time. He is listening that there is a man named Jesus who came to this earth. He paid the price for his for our sins, and now by the by believing in what he did. we become brand new we become sons and daughters of the heavenly father we are going to receive the holy spirit god is going to possess us look at what happens in verse number 44 while peter is still speaking let us read that while peter was still speaking the holy spirit fell upon all who heard the word while peter was still speaking the holy spirit fell upon all who heard the word let me say this again i know my brothers and sisters if you're right now multitasking if you're distracted this is a golden moment of truth if we are going to change our relationship the way we relate to god we may be have been born in christian homes we may have been going to church for many years we may have been coming to so many bible classes we may have gone to so many retreats but listen to what the lord is saying he's telling cornelius cornelius is listening to peter the word of god is being preached cornelius and his household are receiving the word of god and as the word is being preached the holy spirit is falling upon cornelius and his household you know my sisters and brothers you know most of the times we have been taught that we need to get ourselves baptized we need to get ourselves cleaned we need to get ourselves you know clean with water and clean with all the blood and you know we need to be good enough to receive the holy spirit but listen to what the word of god is telling us in the new covenant these people were pagans these people were not even accepted by the lord they were not even belonging to the covenant with israel they were not even sons and daughters but the day they listen to the gospel with their ears the day they received the gospel of jesus christ the day they understood that there was a man by the name of jesus who came to this earth he paid the price for their sins they received the gift of the holy spirit and you know my sisters and brothers Cornelius was receiving attentively listen to it very carefully Cornelius was attentively listening what we was hearing from Peter what Peter was speaking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and you know my brothers and sisters this is the secret i would say this is the key to receiving the holy spirit this is the key to receiving everything that the holy spirit wants to give us remember when the word is being preached when the word is being proclaimed if you are not paying attention 
If you are multitasking, if you believe that just because you are in a class, just listening to the word of God, your ears are hearing, but your heart isn't listening. If your mind is not able to comprehend, you're not able to get understanding. You can go to a hundreds of retreats. You can join a thousands of Bible class, but it is not going to change your life. There is going to be no change in your relationship because you have not heard the word of God with your heart. You have allowed the word of God to be heard on one side. You felt it was it was like a, you know, a fashion to be part of a Bible class. It was a fashion for you to be part of a ministry. But you have never, ever, ever understood what this relationship with Jesus is all about. And you know, my brothers and sisters, when we receive the good news of Jesus, namely that he died on the cross for us, he paid the price for our sins. He was made sin for the whole world. He rose again on the third day. He has taken away all our sins. And now all our sins have been remitted. The Holy Spirit comes upon us. He comes to live inside of us. God takes possession of every part of our being. And this is exactly what happened with Cornelius. You know, my sister and brothers, what happened to Cornelius? Cornelius and his household invited Peter because the angel had told him to invite Peter. Cornelius is listening to the gospel being preached by Peter. As he hears Peter preaching, he puts his faith for the remission of his sins and the Holy Spirit begins to fall upon them and all those people who were in that house who are receiving the word of God. And then what happens in verses 45 to 46? Listen to this, my brothers and sisters. Cornelius and his household have invited Peter to share the word. Cornelius, Peter is actually making the, the cross of Jesus so real. It happened maybe some months before, maybe it happened even weeks before. But now when Peter is preaching that gospel to Cornelius and his household, he's making the cross of Jesus. He's making the crucifixion of Jesus. He's making that scene of Calvary so real to Cornelius and his household that now Cornelius is attentively listening. He's receiving that word. He's beginning to understand that word. He's beginning to understand that Jesus has taken their sins away. And the moment that understanding comes, the spirit of God begins to start being poured out upon Cornelius and his household. Now let us read from verses 45 to 46 and see what happens. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Wow! Simply wow! You know, my sister and brothers, these are people who are circumcised. They are believers. They know Jesus Christ. They have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Probably all of them who came from Peter's house, they must have been there with Peter on the day of Pentecost. They must have been the ones who were the 3,000 who heard the word of God and also received the Holy Spirit. But when they come to Cornelius' house, when they come to the house of the Gentiles, they begin to see that the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured upon the Gentiles. It has been poured upon Cornelius. It has been poured upon all those people who are also in Cornelius' household because they begin to hear them pre pre uh, speaking in tongues and extolling God, praising God, glorifying God. You know, my brothers and sisters, every time the Holy Spirit fell on people in the New Testament, you know, a gift of the Holy Spirit was manifested in those receiving the Holy Spirit. And they were giving the evidence that they had reached or they had received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Please understand, my brothers and sisters, you and I have understood. We must have gone to how many Christmas celebrations in our life, how many Easter celebrations in our life, how many Good Friday celebrations in our life, how many Monday Thursday celebrations in our life, how many Lent seasons we must have gone in our life. And today, as we hear the word of God, if we have still not understood that impact that the sacrifice of Jesus has done, we have not made him our Lord God and Savior. We are simply living in a deceived world. We are living in a, in a make-believe world. We have still not understood our identity in Christ. And therefore, the day we accept the sacrifice of Jesus, the day we believe in the gospel of Jesus, we also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember, my brothers and sisters, we do not receive the Holy Spirit by our deeds or by any of our own actions. Please understand that. 
You know, today as we worship the Lord, in a, in a short while we'll be worshiping the Lord. Melanie will be conducting the worship and we are going to see a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We are going to see the gift of tongues. Many of you are going to receive the gift of tongues. Many of you are going to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, gifts of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all the gifts that are there. But we must understand we do not receive the Holy Spirit by our deeds, by our performance. Just like I was performing in church all those years when I never knew the word of God. Remember, my brothers and sisters, as we worship the Lord, as we praise him, as we shout out our hallelujahs, as we give him glory, as we open our mouths and start praising the Lord, as we start surrendering our lives to him, not telling him, Lord, this is my plan. Please bless my plan. We tell the Lord, Lord, nothing of me, everything of you. I'm just surrendering my life. I'm just coming there absolutely zero, emptying myself of everything that I have in my life so that you can fill me, you can empower me, you can strengthen me, you can use me for your glory. And you know, my brothers and sisters, that's the only time we will truly be able to pray. We will truly be able to connect with the Lord. We will truly be able to have a relationship with the Lord. We will begin to see our life changing because we will be communicating with the Lord on a two-way ticket. It won't be just, you know, I talk, talk, talk without hearing from the Lord because the Lord wants to speak to us more than we can ever say to him. He knows everything that we need. If we can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can receive the gift of tongues. We can open ourselves to the best that God wants to offer us. Then Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 shall also manifest in our life. Remember in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, what happened? You know, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound of, you know, the, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. They were in the closed room. They were all waiting there in the temple. And when the Holy Spirit came, Tongues of fire came. The people began to speak in tongues and all those signs and wonders took place. Let us read Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So here in verse number four, we read, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. What is this other languages? They were speaking in tongues. You know, this is the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, my brothers and sisters, please understand. If you know that there is a house in which there is all treasures, you know, there are all treasures in the house. There are so many gifts available in that house. But if you don't have the key of the door of that house, can you ever receive any of those gifts? And can you receive any of those treasures from that house? Absolutely not. In the same way, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the gift of tongues, which is the key, which is the key of the door that unlocks all the other gifts that are inside that house. So it unlocks the gifts of all that is that the Holy Spirit wants to give us. The gift of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to teach us. We have seen that in the last three, four days. And I do believe that if you have been attentively listening in the last three, four days, because what we are going to do today is actually a culmination of the preparation that we have been making in the last three, four days on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Remember, my brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit wants to give us a lot of gifts. Many of us on our birthday, on our anniversaries, on our special days, we are all expecting gifts from one another. And therefore, when you understand that you belong to the new covenant, you belong to the covenant that Jesus made with his precious blood. When you believe in the cross of Calvary, that's the time you're opening yourself to a lot of gifts. Imagine the gifts the Holy Spirit wants to give because the Holy Spirit wants to give us the best. And so before we go any further, before we go into worship, I want to take to you one verse from Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1 verse number 20. The Spirit of God is telling me that, you know, this is a very important verse that we need to reflect on because this verse 
is going to help us to pray in the spirit and it is going to build us up in our faith it is going to build up build us up in our relationship with god let me tell you my brothers and sisters jude chapter 1 verse number 20 is talking about building ourselves up or you know encouraging ourselves up or you know uh, inspiring ourselves or you know charging ourselves up like just like a like a like a like a battery has to be charged so that you know that battery can provide the energy for whatever it is being connected to in the same way praying in the holy spirit praying in tongues helps us to build ourselves up in the most holy faith let us read that jude chapter 1 verse number 20 but you beloved build yourselves up on your most holy faith pray in the holy spirit now you know my sister and brothers I, I went to verse number 20 but I want to go to verse number 19 as well can we go to verse number 19 because you know in verse number 19 contrary to what is mentioned in verse number 20 where you know we are all dominated by our senses you know, we should never be dominated by our senses, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell, what we feel. We should be always be controlled by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who is in us who should control our life. We should be controlled by the Holy Spirit. So let's read verse number 19. It is these worldly people devoid of the Spirit who are causing divisions. So people who are of the worldly nature, people who belong to the flesh, people who don't have the spirit of God, they are always concerned about the world. Where will I get my food from? Where will this coronavirus will end? What is happening to the world today? What are our leaders doing? These are not our discussion. These are not discussions of people of God. Let the people of this world manage the world. We need to manage God's kingdom. We need to advance God's kingdom. We need to let the good news of Jesus reach. And therefore, Contrary to the what is mentioned in the previous verse, this verse number 20 is, you know, is telling us that we should not be dominated by our five senses, but we should be, let the Holy Spirit control our life. You know, my brothers and sisters, we do this, how? By praying in the Holy Spirit, by praying in tongues. And you know, this, in, this is included that, you know, it's not just limited to praying in tongues. Please understand, you know, praying in tongues is a wonderful thing. As I told you, it's a key that unlocks all the other gifts. As we pray in tongues, my brothers and sisters, we are building ourselves up in our most holy faith. We are building ourselves in our most holy faith. It takes faith, my brothers and sisters, our most holy faith to be able to pray in tongues. You know, if somebody starts praying and saying, Hulaba, Shikaralaba, Shirala, you're praying in tongues. Somebody who doesn't know about, about, about tongues, somebody will look at people praying in tongues and they'll say, these people are gone crazy. These people are gone, you know, they need to be taken to a psychiatric hospital. These people have gone monkey. They are doing monkey business. But you know, my brothers and sisters, it takes faith to open our mouth and start letting the Holy Spirit in us make us utter those words. Because when we are uttering those words, now the Holy Spirit in us will take control. Now we'll get connected to the divine. You know, this is one of the truths for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It is, the, it, is, it is one of the truths when we understand that we can pray in the Spirit, we can pray in tongues only by faith. And therefore, brothers and sisters, this praying on tongues is one truth which will manifest to us that we are truly having the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God has possessed us, and therefore, this Spirit of God is not only wanting to give us the gift of tongues, He wants to give us much more gift, the gift of healing, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of understanding, all these gifts will follow, and now the Word of God, now the Word of God will become such a tasty meal, it will become such a wonderful food to eat, because when you understand the Word, when you understand the wisdom, you will be reading the word with such enthusiasm. God will be speaking to you. You will not just be reading the word of God to make yourself happy. But now you will be so excited to read the word of God. Because the word of God is going to speak back to you. It's going to give you instruction. As you begin to obey and that word comes alive. You are going to see the glory of God in your life. Amen. So at this point in time, I'm going to have Melanie come here to lead us into worship. I want you, my brothers and sisters, to please be understood, understand this. As we worship the Lord, as we give him glory, believe and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Receive the gift of tongues, especially the gift of tongues. I, I promise you, this God who has just given each one of us the understanding of how to receive tongues, how to pray in the Holy Ghost, how we can build up our faith. He's going, he's going to allow us to receive what he has already finished through, our, through, the, through the Jesus on the cross. All we need to do is, by faith, 
open our hands, open our hearts, open our minds and receive God's very best. Amen. So let's let's begin our praise and worship. Come. Yeah, good evening, my dear sisters and brothers. And uh, before we start worship, uh, I just want to uh, share with you a few things about the gift of tongues, which really helped me uh, in order to receive the, the gift of tongues. One is when we are praying, when we are worshiping the Lord, and uh, we are you know, expecting to receive the gift of tongues, it is very important that we open our mouth and speak. So as though we are speaking words, you know, we just say like la 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 or alleluia, alleluia or ba 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 ba. Just as we are speaking, you know, baby words or words that's coming out from the depths of our heart. The nature of the words or the, the words themselves are not important, but it is our heart condition. Remember, we are talking tongues is a language of the Holy Spirit. So we are communing or communicating directly with God. And that is a language with the, which, the, which the devil doesn't understand. So it's a beautiful way for us to speak directly to God. But most importantly is we need to open our mouth and, and say those words, you know. So I will lead you and I request each one of you to be open and, and you know, receive the gift, the gift with the Lord wants to, wants to give to each one of us without exception. Uh, the other point that I would like to uh, like to make is do not be fearful because sometimes you know uh, many a time because of the fear of the experience itself uh, some of some people you know do, are not open to receiving the gift of tongues you merely have to desire it uh, say that Lord I want to receive this gift and definitely the Lord is going to bless each one of us with the gift of the, of tongues okay so let's all close our eyes and let us worship the Lord as this song is being sung. Let us close our eyes and let us receive. And as we praise him, as we listen to the words, as we listen to the lyrics, don't get distracted. Close your eyes and focus on Jesus on the cross. Let us worship him now. wonderful moment we know and believe Lord that you are here with us Lord you dwell in the praises of your people and father as we praise you and we thank you we know Lord that we are communing directly with you Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of each and every one of us thank you father thank you Jesus Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, we believe that at this moment you are at the right hand of the Father. We want to sing to you from the depths of our heart. We want to raise an hallelujah to you, Lord God, because you alone are great and mighty and worthy to be praised. Amen. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. Thank you for giving us this renewed life, Lord. Thank you for counting us worthy, Lord. Thank you for cleaning us, Lord Jesus, making us a brand new creation, Lord. Lord, we belong to you. We love you, Lord God. We want to praise you. We want to shout our hallelujah to you, Lord God. We want to raise our voices, Lord, just singing glory, honor, and praise to you, our mighty God and King. You are the King of kings, Lord. You are the Lord of lords. You are the most high God, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. All glory to you, Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, let us just raise our voices and sing to him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We bless your holy name. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. To you be the 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all continue to be in worship in presence of the Lord. Let's worship Him. Let's give Him the worship. She did it. 
Oh Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. To you be the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we just empty ourselves. We just surrender to you everything, Lord. We surrender our life to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this wonderful time together. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time of worship. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this wonderful time to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to experience, to experience your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for anointing our hearts, our minds, our lips, and truly taking control of our entire being so that from this day onwards, Lord, 
our life will never ever be the same. And for all this, Father, for what you have done in our life, we want to praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen.